man. So could Bitcoin be repeating the exact same pattern which led to its collapse in the 2018 bear market? I've just seen evidence that Bitcoin is forming the exact same pattern in the chart which it was forming back in 2018, which led to its bear market lows. We've also had the IMF come out and say that the world economy is in a worse shape than we previously expected and the worst is yet to come. We're going to take a key look at the levels in the charts for Bitcoin and give you an exact price target of where we could be falling on this next move to the downside. We're just going to break down some important on-chain metrics and also what Jamie Dimon had to say. So loads to cover. I'll smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. If you want to trade any of these moves, you can do so using Bybit or BitGet. Both those platforms are the ones I use. Links in the description. Claim your bonuses and get trading. So as you can see, guys, Bitcoin is forming this pattern, this descending triangle pattern. And we've been monitoring this for a while and waiting for a breakdown here on the weekly chart is if you go back to the 2018 bear market, you remember the bull market ran up all the way to 20,000. We then came falling down in stages, just like we've been doing now from 69,000. And we entered the same pattern, right? A descending triangle. And then finally, you got two horrific weeks of a collapse breaking down and eventually a few weeks later, forming its lows at 3,200. Could we be repeating this same pattern again? And what could this mean for the Bitcoin price? We also know US 10-year yields are spiking. We've got the pre-market opening up in the red. Why? What is going on? Well, the IMF came out with a shocking report literally minutes ago, and they have said that the worst is yet to come. They've reduced global growth to 2.7% in 2023, and they are saying the worst is yet to come. And for many people, 2023 will feel like a recession. We've known this for a while. We've said that even the United States are playing semantics with the definition, but they had two consecutive quarters of negative growth and the world economy is struggling. What I found particularly interesting was this. Aside from the global financial crisis and the peak of the COVID-19 pandemic, this is the weakest growth profile since 2001. That is exactly what I've been saying on this channel. I've been saying to anybody who listens that we could be heading for horrible. I even said the words depression when people were not even talking about a recession because things just did not feel right. Now you're seeing the issue with the UK. What did we have with the UK today? Well, guess what? They decided to do more printing. Yep, yesterday they said, oh no, we're not going to print. And today they intervened again because pension funds are starting to panic, right? They're starting to sell. So we can see the UK in a, in a bunch of pickle. They're trying to bring inflation down, but at the same time, they're still printing. And this just goes to show that a lot of major economies will be struggling over the impending weeks, months, and maybe quarters uh, heading into 2023. So for anybody who thinks we're going to have a quick recovery and we're out of this mess, guys, you need a reality check. Here, I'm going to give you the data. I'm not going to tell you Bitcoin to $100,000. There are plenty of channels that will give you that exact data. So if you want that, where they just say, oh, Bitcoin's going to go to the moon, please, guys, go find that elsewhere. Here, we're going to actually look at the data like grown-ups, and we're going to come to conclusions even if we don't like it. Even if we've just had a year of a down market, everybody's feeling the pain, I've got to look at the data and say, this is what looks most likely. And right now, I'm worried about a global financial crisis, okay? And you can see the IMF is coming out and backing that up as well. The worst is yet to come. For many people, 2023 will feel like a recession. More than a third of the global economy will see two consecutive quarters of negative growth. They then said there are three main worries. And what did we say the worries were, guys? I always said there's these bunch of worries. And for that reason, we cannot run. Obviously, we know inflation. And therefore, they listed that as the cost of living crisis. They then listed that Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Obviously, that continues to be an issue. And also China's economic slowdown. So these are the three pillars that continue to hinder growth in the global economy. Price of natural growth, gas has more than quadrupled since 2021. IMF anticipates global inflation will peak in late 2022. So really kind of damning report and probably a sobering report for many in the market to wake up to today. And for that reason, we are seeing yields are spiking slightly today. We are seeing that the pre-market is opening up in the red. Remember, NASDAQ is now at two-year lows. We covered that off yesterday. And Bitcoin is holding up fairly well. But this pattern is not one we can ignore. And the pattern is indicating that we could be repeating this exact pattern which we had from 2018. So if we had this pattern and you can see we entered this triangle pattern, we held up for a long time around the support around 6,000, right? And everybody felt it, felt it was comfortable. But then from there, you had a further 45% collapse. Now, why is that number important? Well, interestingly, because Jamie Dimon, who's the CEO 
of uh, JP Morgan. And again, we don't listen to everything he says. He's a bit of a, a crypto bear. But I do want to point over to the fact that he said the S&P could fall another easy 20%. So if the S&P is falling 20%, what could the Nasdaq fall from here, right? He also goes on to say a bunch of different things. He goes, Europe is already in a recession and they're likely to put the US in some kind of recession six to nine months from now. And he's concerned about the impact of quantitative tightening. Diamond did say that the US economy is actually still doing pretty well. Now, look, some aspects of the US economy are doing well, we agree, right? The labor market is doing okay. But let's face it, things aren't going to, you know, be that strong for long. We've already had two consecutive quarters of negative growth in the US. Obviously, for political reasons, they're trying to play out that the US economy is really strong, but inflation is still high. Earnings could still be high uh, coming out, which is coming out in the next week or so. I mean, already here later this week, you've got some important earnings coming through. Thursday, you've got BlackRock, you've got Domino's, you've got Citigroup, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, more importantly, on Friday. So we do get the kickoff uh, to earnings. So we're going to get some interesting data coming out towards the back end of this week. So we will be monitoring that. Now, what are the markets expecting? Well, the markets are still pricing in. About 80% of the market has priced in 75 basis point rate hike. So we we can see that the market is still voting with the idea that Jerome Powell continues to need to be aggressive with his rate hike. Now, if we come back to the Bitcoin chart, as promised, let's give you this price target. So let's come back to this as this descending triangle which we're forming now. Now, if we break from this triangle, you can take the measured move and you could take it from the apex of the triangle. I mean, let's just do it conservatively. I want to give you a conservative target, then I'm going to show you my other target. So let's pop that there. Now, when you put it at the point of the breakout, where do you get to? You can see it starts falling down to that 12 and a half thousand level. As a more conservative target, if we were to break down from here, I will be looking at 13,800 to come into play as my price target. Now, why is that significant? Well, the reason that target is significant is again, dates back to to the 2018-2019 bear market. So what happened was we had this descending triangle, okay, and we fell. We broke the triangle to the downside. We created our low at 3,200, and that turned out to be that bear market low. But then what you saw was you saw an impulse run-up. So this happened uh, in November time, December time, and then you saw an impulse run-up, which by the time you got to June, so six months later, got you to a peak here of 13,800. Then you got rejected all the way back down. Okay, so this peak here is where I'm getting that horizontal support from that that it could be the price target we could be seeing here on Bitcoin. We're already holding right now this 20 level 20,000 level we're holding right now is from the peak of the previous bull market. But if we lose that, we have to go to the next peak, which is 13,800. So that's what I'm looking at here from a technical perspective. And when you weigh up the fact that the global economy is weakening at the knees, things do not look great. So I have to continue to keep that bearish hat on and give you the data that we see. Let me quickly show you guys the dollar index as well. And you can see here on the dollar index that this is not letting up. I'm going to switch over to the daily chart here and bring out the EMA ribbon. And exactly like I said, you can see my arrow is still drawn in there, guys. Look, do not get caught by these little calling off periods. This is exactly what we said. We said it was going to come into its EMA ribbon and bounce off of it. And that's exactly what you're getting. If I just move my arrow out of the way, you can see it's exactly what we said. It's following the arrow to a T and bouncing from the EMA ribbon. Now, I was saying this in the descendancy. When dollar index was coming down into its EMA ribbon, Bitcoin was rising. Everybody was super excited. But I said, guys, hold off. You have to give respect to the dollar index. Every other time it came into its EMA ribbon, it's bounced for a very long time. Look at the move it's been on. So you cannot expect just when it's super overextended like this, you cannot expect, expect it to keep going. It's going to cool off for a bit. And now you're getting that bounce, right? US 10 year, same thing. Bouncing off its EMA ribbon. People continue to flock to safety right now because they have nowhere else to put their money. NASDAQ at two years lows. Risk stocks, painful. Crypto, painful right now. And that is why people are flocking to these asset classes. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to create a video looking at a bunch of on-chain metrics. So if you want to see that, comment below on-chain analysis. There's about five to six really important charts I want to share with you, but I didn't want to rush them in this video. I want to give you a separate video breaking those down. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that. And by the way, if you want to know all these technical things that I'm looking at, what is the EMA ribbon? What is head and shoulders pattern? What is a symmetrical triangle? What is descending triangle? It's all available for free. The Skillshare course link is in the description. It's completely free. Go sign up to it. Use the course, take notes, learn about it. This course will cost you thousands of dollars, guys, but I've just put it out there for free and it took me weeks, if not months, to record for you guys. So definitely check that out. Uh, it's a completely free resource for you guys to learn from absolutely scratch, from beginner 
how to do TA. We've had an important update this morning that Google selects Coinbase to take cloud payments with cryptocurrencies and will use its custody tool. So really, really important. Google will start allowing a subset of customers to pay for the cloud services. So if you're using Google Drive and all these other bits and pieces, you can pay using digital currencies. So yeah, probably nothing. We should ignore it, right? There's no adoption going on here. <laughs> no, don't invest in cryptocurrencies. In addition, Google said it would explore using Coinbase Prime, a service for storing and trading cryptocurrencies. Great stuff. So really good stuff there. And Coinbase will move some of its applications to Google Clouds from Amazon Web Services, which obviously makes a bunch of sense for them to do if they're now in a partnership. Another thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the estimated leverage ratio. You can see leverage is starting to spike here. And I'm guessing these will be net shorts. I'm guessing a bunch of people are loading up some leverage shorts right now because the hot, everybody here in this market is expecting a downturn, expecting a breakdown from this 20,000 level. And that is why we're seeing the leverage ratio start to climb. Now, what am I currently doing in this market? I'm being poised. I'm being patient, guys. I'm not shorting. I'm not longing right now. I'm sitting on my hands waiting for cheaper prices. I will set some limit orders. And if we do see a breakdown to some of those juicier prices, and I don't just think we're going to head to 13,800 straight away. I'm giving you my long-term view on the weekly chart. But what I am looking for is, are we going to test those lows? Are we going to lose that first level at 18,700? If we lose that, are we going to head down to the June lows at 17,600? If we lose that, I'll be nibbling even heavier the lower we go. That's my game plan right now. Some crazy opportunities here to really buy some of your favorite cryptocurrencies at dirt cheap prices. And that is why whoever's still in the market right now during this fully fledged crypto winter going into a deep depression, they're really going to benefit as long as they have a long term horizon, as long as they're only risking what they're willing to lose, and as long as they follow the game plan and take their emotions out of it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you appreciate this type of content, let me know in the comments. Go watch my Phantom and Near Protocol price target video here, which I posted last night, and I'll see you in the next one.